Good news, minions. The wizard's mind is starting to slip. He's been making absent-minded errors in his videos. Have you seen? Did you notice? Well, I have. <laughs> Characters with an extra S. Or how about forgetting to mention that Order of the Stick is not a sponsor? That's a big no-no. The guest player, Brennan, who ran the thief Elada, or the slip-up of calling Idana Elada. This may all seem insignificant to you, my minions, but rest assured, this is good, very good. You see, the mind of a soul that's trapped in a gem will eventually crack, and is sort of like tenderizing a steak, succulent and ready for the barbecue. Don't worry, minions, you're all on the invite list. Keep an eye out and let me know if you see any other mental hiccups from the wizard. I'll keep the barbecue on standby. I do love grilled soul food. In the meantime, speaking of fraying mental states, let's talk about how to really aggravate your players at the D&D table with a favorite minion of mine, the infamous Nilbog. Do you like goblins? If your players are getting a tad uppity, as players tend to once in a while, then smack them back down a few notches on the arrogance meter with this deliciously evil creature. What is an Ilbog? Well, simply put, it's a regular run-of-the-mill goblin that has been mutated by the space-time continuum to give it strange reality-warping powers. They are completely indistinguishable from other goblins, but in their presence, strangeness just happens. No one quite knows what causes the creation of a Nilbog. They are fairly rare, but it is known that only goblins are affected. The practical effects against your players are where you can get the most delicious joy out of their frustrations, as the presence of a Nilbog causes others to act contrary to their intent or even their natures. There's no limit here, minions. Just ask what the players wish to do, then figure out a relative opposite and have them do it. Then enjoy the bemused looks on their faces as they take it in. The thief wants to be all sneaky, hiding in shadows. Well, how about a song and dance right in full view instead? Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle them. <laughs> the warrior readies his sword and shield for battle. Well, how about lying down, exposing his belly like a cute puppy expecting a nice little belly rub. And for extra fun, have the goblins give it. Take a seat. Bloop. There you go. There you go. See? Isn't that way better than just trying to bite my fingers all the time? Oh. And good luck casting a spell under these conditions, you spell-casting nincompoops. Eight slugs! You're robbing yourself of great times if you're just using the effect to kill PCs. Seriously, what's the point in that? You're the DM, you could just kill the PCs at will. No, my minions. The goal is to fray their nerves, aggravate them so much that they can't help but laugh despite themselves. Go nuts. Go silly. Let the pitiful band of cannon fodder goblins humiliate the PCs, then let them go after relieving them of their magic items and treasure. Oh, yes. For most players these days, used to being handed victory on a silver platter. That's actually a fate worse than death. Expect tears and drink them heartily. Until they figure out how and what a Nilbog is, any effort to go back will only result in the same frustrating humiliations. Relish in it as players bang their heads against proverbial walls. Or possibly even literal ones. That too could be really fun depending on what you're into. The Nilbog is super hard to kill, too. Basically, any effect that would hurt it only restores its health. It can't be injured by attacks. That's assuming the space-time effects even allow for an attack, an effect for which there is no saving throw, I might add. Short of a wish spell, that is. I am, of course, talking about the classic old-school Nilbog. The 5th edition variants I have come across are, as is typical of 5th edition nonsense, greatly nerfed to the point of asking, why bother? But if you're a 5th edition dungeon master and wishing to relish in some mischief, then take your cues from the 1st edition Fiend Folio version and ignore the crappy 5th edition updates. 
A word of warning, many 5th edition players won't be able to handle it, so expect whining. Unless, of course, that's your intent, in which case, I approve most heartily. <laughs> now, my minions, remember, the weakness of a Nilbog is healing. Healing hurts them. Players with the presence of mind to figure this out should not be thwarted too much. But don't just give this information away. Also, if players do get wise and start declaring actions opposite to their intent with the notion of tricking the effect, well then, let them have it. Especially if they get creative and fun about it. That is, after all, the point. Just don't be going on your tube of you and broadcasting the secrets across the astral plane for all to see. That would just be dumb, now wouldn't it? Ahem, <clears throat> yeah, anyhow. If you're running a Nilbog and wish to keep things relatively fair, then I suggest coming up with a little chart, similar to the Confusion spell, where in a list of possible actions, including the player's actual intent, are all potential outcomes. Have absolute fun with the opportunity here, including a little room for creative improvisation should something memorable occur to you. The best part about Nilbogs is they make encounters with normal goblins absolutely terrifying. If your players have gotten a little too complacent when encountering goblins and just butcher them outright like murder hobos, and let's be honest, children, most players do, then toss in an Ilbog just to shake things up. That's all for now, minions. Go forth and recruit some Nilbogs to your armies and watch the hilarity ensue. And remember, keep careful watch on the wizard. Let me know of any future slip-ups so I can gauge when his soul is ready for the barbecue. I shall ready my favorite bib. The Demi-Lich Jamboree awaits, and subscribers are all on the guest list, so make sure to click that button. Until then, my minions. <laughs>